If you think about the food that you eat in terms of nutrition, then one of the biggest questions that you face is how much protein you should eat. Because to a certain extent, that question is quite simple when in the context of fat or carbohydrate. If you eat too much, you put on weight. If you don't eat enough, then you'll lose weight, but you might struggle to perform. Yeah, of course, there are a number of people out there who have some fairly extreme views on both of those. Hello, you know who you are. But when it comes to protein, it does feel like there's quite a big discrepancy between what we as cyclists are recommended to eat. Yeah, well, let's start, shall we, with why you need protein in your diet. Proteins are the building blocks of life. They're present in every cell in your body, from your DNA right through to your fingertips. And you need to consume protein because your body needs to repair cells and then also create new ones. Because while your body can build chains of proteins, it doesn't have the ability to create every amino acid that you need to build those chains, which is why you need to eat some essential amino acid in your diet. And for those of you interested in what those essential amino acids are, here is a list. Histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, theanine, tryptophan, valine. Which is your favourite? Uh, probably leucine. Yeah? No, no, tryptophan. I like tryptophan because it helps send you to sleep. It's in Turkey, that's why people fall asleep on Christmas Day. <laughs> nice. Makes me cry. So however way you look at it, you need to consume some protein in order to survive. But the question is then, how much? Well, for the majority of people, it's recommended that they consume around about 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. However, when you start training regularly, the breakdown of tissue happens at a far greater rate. And that's partly down to extra mechanical stress and partially because your body can start using lean muscle as its source of fuel. So in this situation, the recommendation is for around one and a half grams of protein per kilogram body weight per day. However, we go to the extreme example, which is Grand Tour riders racing back-to-back -back days for three weeks on end. If they don't want to waste away completely, the recommendation is for around three grams of protein per kilogram body weight per day. So for a rider of mine or Dan's build, then that's about 210 grams of protein per day, or about six tins of tuna. Now that sounds like an awful lot, but put in the context of the total calorific intake of that day, then it actually probably is much easier to satisfy your protein requirements. But to a certain extent, quantity isn't all of the picture. Actually, quality and timing is probably far more important. Yeah, and when we talk about quality, we are referring to whether or not the food contains all of the amino acids. So take animal protein as an example, be it meat or milk, etc. We generally refer to it as high quality protein because it contains all of the amino acids. On the other hand, a vegetarian source of protein, such as peas here, is referred to as a lower quality of protein because either the amino acids can be missing completely or perhaps only available in very small quantities. However, to get around that fact by eating non-animal protein, you simply have to combine foods. So generally, a pulse and a grain, and then that gives you all the amino acids that you need. So it's not exactly rocket science then. A healthy, balanced diet, whether omnivore, vegetarian or vegan, is likely to satisfy all of your protein requirements as long as you take enough care with putting it together. As more research into sports nutrition goes on, we are finding out all sorts of very cool new things. As we mentioned earlier, Dan's second favourite protein is leucine. No, wait, I've made it my first now. Well, I'm glad to hear it because by rights, it probably should be number one. Well, it's the natural choice because after all, leucine acts as a trigger to stimulate muscle synthesis after training. So studies are out there which have shown that if you consume around about three to four grams of leucine in the one hour after you've finished exercising, that you will build more muscle protein. As long, of course, as long, of course, as you've got the other amino acids present in order to build that protein. Now, leucine in food is found in only very small quantities. And what that means is that if you want to get that three to four grams of it, you're going to need to consume 800 milliliters of milk. Almost all of that. Or a cup and a half of nuts. Almost all of those. But this is where sports specific nutrition comes in. So SIS, for example, in their Rego Rapid Recovery have included the leucine in it for you. So what that means is that you won't have to consume almost a liter of milk or indeed the 80 gram of nut fats in order to get the protein that you require. So if we're gonna get that three to four grams of leucine then, what else are we gonna need? Well, about 16 grams of protein as an addition 
to that leucine in order to make sure that your body's requirements for amino acids are satisfied as it's trying to capitalize on that rebuilding process. Yeah, and this is where it is important to remember that your body is only capable of absorbing around about 20 grams of protein every few hours. So, whether or not you believe all of these studies, it stands to reason that you should give your body a steady supply of amino acids in order for it to be able to sustain that rebuilding process. In practical terms then, that means in addition to your three square meals a day, you're also going to need a mid-morning and a mid-afternoon snack as well. Well, 11s is an afternoon tea, obviously. Well, naturally. You're going to need to make sure, though, that you have protein in your snacks as well. So that could just be like a skinny latte or a protein bar or some nuts or even actually before bed as well, a milky drink or indeed a nighttime specific recovery drink. So how much protein does a cyclist actually need? Well, the answer is enough, taken at the right times of day, of high enough quality, little and often as part of a balanced diet. The harder you train, the more protein you're going to want to consume, up to about three grams per kilo of body weight per day, as well as considering individual amino acids like leucine. Now, it is worth mentioning, actually, that if you eat more protein than your body can process, then you are just going to excrete it, which is a terrible waste of money, but nothing else. Yeah, but it really is worth considering, especially if you're looking to improve performance on the bike, making sure, of course, that you still combine it with some training. Yeah. Now, if you want some ideas actually for specific training sessions for certain areas of your riding, then you could do a lot worse than watching one of these two videos up here. The first one up there is how to train for short, steep climbs. And then down there, we've got how to train for long rides. You could also do a lot worse than subscribing to GCN. And all you need to do in order to do that is click on one of our lean muscle clad bodies. Mm. Taking our Lucy. Oh yeah.